So Coralie, you're keeping track of our samples. You think you got some good rocks for your research so far? Yeah, so we collected seven rock samples and six water pairs. So hoping to collect some more so we can get a good sample set. Do we have any candidates for crustiest rock yet? No idea. Can't it's hard to tell uh, how thick the crusts are until we can cut them with the rock saw, see what's on the inside. Are you actually busting them like all the way in half? Or are you? Yeah. So the rock saw is pretty cool because um, it's a diamond edge blade. So diamond is the hardest mineral on known to mankind, womankind, humankind. Mm -hmm. And um, so it can cut through anything. So your fingernail is like the, it's, there's a Mohs hardness scale. So your fingernail is about a two and then a diamond is a 10. And then there's a whole bunch of minerals that make up the rest of it. But yes, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can put your finger on the blade. You'd never have to worry about cutting your finger. The only thing you have to worry about is like cutting your fingernail because your fingernail has a hardness. But um, what is this for? Cu no, that I cutting did not rocks. Know. Oh, with the rock saw. Yeah. Ah, cool. I was not aware of that. Wild. You can't yeah, cut your finger with a rock saw. It's always fun to do tours of um, where we keep our rock saw and we like put our hand on the rock saw and scare little kids and we <laughs> try and entice them to put their fingers and hands and play with the blade. I feel like that's a, not a good thing to encourage. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Is Proper that sort of like how the blades that they use to cut off casts and things that, that, that don't cut the skin but will cut something hard? I thought the you said cut concept. cats. Cats. What cats. are you talking about? Cats. cats. She has you... a cat. She would never do that. No. Okay, good. <laughs> I know. I would okay. never cut my cat. That would be awful. <laughs> wow. No, <laughs> like if you break a break a limb. You totally, have... yeah. The cast, yeah. And the rock saw wouldn't work on the cat anyway, so we're good. Yeah, that's, I guess the point of the rock saw is that it doesn't cut cats. Or hands, or children's hands, apparently. Well, my next question was like, what kind of training did you have to not, you know, accidentally cut your hand off? <laughs> oh, nothing. They said, don't worry about it. Go right in there. They just oh, said, here's okay. a blade, get to it. They said, here, put this jacket on. Do you have to worry about fragments uh, flying off the rock as you cut it, or does it cut a really smooth cut? Uh, a little bit, especially with these crusts, because the crusts are actually really brittle and easily breakable, so there is a little bit of flying debris around. But when you're using the rock saw, you do use uh, noise-canceling headphones and eye protection. And then I started my uh, grad school journey during COVID, so I had to wear a mask, so I wasn't ever getting any debris in my mouth or nose. Hey, there's a plus to having a mask on all the time. Yeah. Is there a risk of getting silicosis from those kind of cuts? Cats? Like, yeah, from, not cats. <laughs> <laughs> no, from cutting rocks. So I don't even know what silicosis is. It's like when you raise a bunch of rock dust and it gets into your lungs and it's like a less bad version of asbestosis. Oh but. my God, new fear unlocked. Um, I have no idea, just mostly because I've never heard of silicosis. Asbestosis, I uh, have heard of. You see it in like mining, as one uh, one example, or um, uh, what do you call the thing where they make the countertops, cabinetry, whatever, that kind of thing, where they what cutting. What happens to you? And tile, cutting tile and stuff like that. What happens to you when you get this? Oh, uh, I don't know. It's reduced lung function and possibly cancer and stuff. Oh, so it is like asbestosis. Yeah, it's very similar to, except asbestos has got a lot of stabby things that embed themselves in your lungs, whereas I think the rocks are less stabby, so they're more, I, I don't know, I'm not at all an expert on this. I just know the word, kind of. Coralie is currently emailing her school, wondering <laughs> why they did not mention this. Maybe, maybe look into that one. Well, fun fact, I before I went to grad school, I worked in two different um, commercial laboratories during, doing environmental testing, specifically testing for asbestos. So that was wow. fun. Right on. Yeah. It's always nice to know that it's everywhere. <laughs> it's in my house. <laughs> 
Yeah, so it would get like it would be like drywall or paint or th it's in concrete. Totally. Yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> Wait, Aaron, are you allowed to keep living there? Are you okay? Oh yeah, we're getting rid of it. That's that's what we're doing currently. Uh, okay. What happens when you have a seventies house? A uh, question about tomorrow's dive. We will be on a different seamount. Um, is it G that we're going to? It is indeed Seamount G. It's the most southerly seamount in this group. Seamount G? Yep. Great. We are not going in alphabetical order. That does distress me a little bit, but it's going to be okay. Randomization makes it more fun. It keeps you guessing. You're like, what seamount is it today? I don't know. What seamount? What organism are we going to see? It's just a grab bag of fun. Well, if I was going to guess what we're going to see tomorrow, uh, probably be something similar to what we saw today. And yesterday. And yesterday. And the day before that. Or not. And the day before that. Seamount G might be like the ruler of all the seamounts in the chain. It might be a glorious thing. the chat is alternating between trying to like calm your fears and exacerbate them so <laughs> oh yeah i'm kind it's of a hypochondriac so <laughs> it's all it, the damage is done <laughs> good to have a healthy amount of fear i think oh there you got a nice siphonophore you see that sort of snot looking thing here's an interesting question that only Coralie would probably know. When <laughs> cutting the crusts in, uh, what do the rocks smell like? Is there a smell that comes off of them? Um, <laughs> Thinking like a metallic vibe, probably. That's a very interesting question. Um, You know, maybe like a metallic scent, but it would, it, it would come from the metal part of the saw and not the rock. And also, um, so you are using like a kind of like a steel plate to move the rock through the saw and sometimes I'm not careful and accidentally cut a bit of that so then it kind of gives another metallic -y smell. No, you're not just using your bare hands to shove it through there. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but it won't cut you do want hand. it to be a little bit steady. How often do you have to change a blade on the rock saw? I don't think that often. I've never had to change a blade. However, I did break a, <laughs> a oh smaller gosh. diamond blade, which was really sad. Um, just because it was we go. having a hard time cutting through the rock. But then you have to change it if you break the blade. But, hey! You know, if you were very hey. careful, then <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. How are you? Now, who's that lovely lady next to you, Hudson? Can you hear us? Okay, I wanted to know who's your your campmate there. Who's next to you? Is that your, is that your mom? Your old mom. No. I was like, who's Hudson? Yeah, who's <laughs> who's mom? <laughs> <laughs> to everyone listening, that was a mistake. <laughs> yeah.
Hmm? Let's go, let's go. 750 meters. You can still... Oh.
Yeah, as we uh, get closer to the surface, you might notice we're seeing more animals in the water column. We're going to be passing through that uh, deep scattering layer soon. That's a, a bunch of animals that are hiding down deep during the day, and they're going to start vertically migrating in the evening to feed at the surface or near the surface. Might see some really cool jellies. Oh, I missed it. I'm, I'm trying to catch some of them on the telestrator. Missed it. I was playing games back there. <laughs> Is that Megan? Yeah, I'm trying to catch some of the jellies ah. in this freeze zoom. <laughs> That's a fun game. Yeah, you know, you got to keep yourself uh, Circle focused and entertained. <laughs> it's a really challenging game. They go by so quick. Uh, they are going by really fast. They look like just mirrors to me.
I can describe our super cool action plan to you guys if you oh, want. Oh yes, please. Let's let's see what we're gonna do. Can you see high pack? Uh, I do. Here, I'll Here zoom way out. Stand by. Awesome. Is this your mapping plan? Yes, mapping to dive sites. Great. So the plan is, we finish up here. Steve and team, you guys get samples off as quickly as possible. Dead yep. run. Start the engines. We hit this gap so that I can sleep at night. <laughs> I like it. And then we hightail it south, full speed ahead over mapped areas. Great. Uh, we hit, we just cover that gap on our way, but we're not going to prioritize it. Um, we get to this gap, which is important because they want to dive on this saddle. Um, we get one line through there and see what we can get with that. We might get enough. And then hightail it again, south. And be on site on Seamount G for a 4 a.m. dive. That seems very ambitious for it's, a nighttime. It's very, oh, yeah. very high stakes, yes. <laughs> we got to be full speed ahead, samples off, main engines up, you know, ready to go. So Great. We'll see if we can make it happen. If not, we just bail anywhere in there and head to Seamount G. Yeah. So how long is that uh, transit? With the dot, with the mapping, um, it's, it's somewhere, it's six and a half to seven and a half hours, depending, like, if we're staying between 10 and 12 knots, which is pretty normal for mapping in transit. Um, yeah. If it's a straight line, I don't know, but I could find that out, too. Great. Let's see what a straight line would be. Yeah, if we just straight lined it, we could be there in a little over four hours. It's 44 nautical miles. Wow. So that's the options. Well, I like how we're filling in those little gaps. Me too. You wouldn't believe how excited I am for this. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. It just makes sense. Like, why... Why leave that? You know, if we can fix it, like, not fix it, but cover yeah. it. Why? Yeah, that's what we, we always try to, but we also have to, you know, the RVs are the, the the most expensive resource, so we have to prioritize using them to the full capabilities, but do what we can where we could fit it in. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you can sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Me too. But only, yes, if I see us head towards this, then I'll be happy. This is just terrible. Like, who, who I know. That? Everything else is done except for that one little. Yeah, the smallest little bit, you know. Yeah, and we tried. We tried yesterday. That was this attempt, but then we got pulled off mm. because the weather improved. So maybe today will be the day. Oh, my gosh. Almost at 500 meters. I almost have to do something. <laughs> So what do you do at 500 meters? I try to call Mark, and he ignores me. Oh, OK. And then at 300, I try for real. Uh, but what time does the deck crew get ready to recover the vehicle? Uh, he'll start putting stuff out about a half hour before, and then for real, 15 to 20 minutes before. Definitely, they get out there when we're at 50 meters, but they're typically out a bit before that. That makes sense. Yeah, so he'll he'll set up the hookers, um, make sure there's air to tuggers, all that kind of stuff. Set up what he can, have dinner, um, but we're going to be late enough that everyone has dinner, and then they'll they'll head out, and we, we stop the winch here at 50 meters, and that's when the, the deck has to be ready to take over. So if we have to, if there's, you know, if it's dinner hour or something else is happening, we can just hold the vehicles at depth until everybody is set up, and then we can uh, bring them the rest of the way up. They're safe at depth, they're not safe at the surface. Yeah, you don't want to get sloshed around in the surface no. or hit the ship. Yeah, exactly. So when they're in the water, they're happy. So we don't we don't bring them up until everyone's ready to go. We did a great job on that dive. We uh, got the main part. I just talked to Adam and 
didn't realize I, when I was making the, he made the dive plan, but I put the targets in for him. And I was like, I wonder why he wants to go back downhill. And it was only because of um, a quirk in Flader Mouse where it adds extra points at the end of your line. Oh. <laughs> so okay. he, didn't, he didn't actually want to go there. So we completed the dive. Perfect. That's yeah, great. It was great. It's going to be almost exactly 24 hours. Yeah, we nailed it. Wait, why does Flader Mouse want to give you extra things? So you're, if you're drawing a profile, there's this add extra points option, option where you hold the shift key and you left click. And what you always forget is that it expects you to left click one more time after you let go of the shift key. So you let go of the shift key and you forget all about it and you're doing something else and you left click and it just throws a dot in there. And sometimes like you're doing something totally different. So that dot's off in like, you know, the continental US somewhere. Oh. Um, and you could delete it, but I, he just he just left it and I didn't know any better. So I was just like, all right, I guess he wants to go downhill. I don't know why. <laughs> Let's put it in. So now we know. We have a few viewers saying, wait, did they say 4 a.m. for the next dive? Uh, yes, but that is Hawaii time. So depending on where you're watching from, uh, it might not be so early for you. Yep, but it'll be early for us. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll be this watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys get more water. <laughs> yep. Maybe I'll get better at this uh, mid-water capture game that I've started. <laughs> there it is. Ooh, oh, nice. it's a squidge. Look at that. Nice double capture. Getting the hang of this. What's that swimmer there? Um, That might be a ketonaf. Is that how you say that word? Yep. At least like that's C's how. and H's and stuff. They're called arrow worms. Yes. I know, I know the word you are speaking. Yeah, sometimes they trick you into thinking they're fish, but they just, they squiggle just enough to give themselves away. Well, when we launch at 4 a.m., uh, we might have a chance of seeing a bunch of squids when we enter the water. Usually at night, the lights of the ship attract a lot of squid, and so they'll probably ink us all over as we're going down in the morning. So that might be an exciting thing to add to our blue water watch. Mm. That's a siphonophore. Oh. It's like Pokemon, you gotta catch them all. I never got into that. <laughs> it was like big when I was a kid and then it made a resurgence and it like did it was big again and people like for online stuff and then I just still oh, never yeah. I avoided it at all costs like forever. They're like, No, I'm <laughs> no. not getting into that. <laughs> Can't do it. Uh, once it became more than a hundred fifty Pokemon, I was like, hmm, I don't know about this. That's too many. 
There's too many iterations. All right, we've passed 500 meters. Getting there.
Pink blue water here is just settling out of her uh, grabbing a little bit of sustenance. If you have any questions, this would be a great time to pop them into the chat. So winds up a bit, 20 knots. Got supposed, supposed two knots of current. That's where we are. We start pushing and pushing in the same direction. <laughs> watch it, watch it start spinning now. Now that we looked at it. I actually do. Can I? I assume you guys saw Mark at dinner. He knows the story. Cool. Awesome. So ROV team, after we pull the ROVs up, what do you guys then have to do with them? Um, so, well, First, we get the vehicles all hooked up to deck power and deck hydraulics so that we can bump out the sample boxes where all the scientists' samples are. Uh, so that's kind of the first step, get that set up. Then the scientists can come and collect all their stuff. Then we have a lot of checks that we do after every single dive. Um, rinse the vehicles with fresh water, um, check a manifold basically for to make sure there's no water intrusion into any of the hydraulic systems. Um, we always have a troubleshooting list. If stuff's gone wrong during the dive, we'll go and debug that. So for example, tonight we have a camera that has stopped working, so we're gonna need to look at that. Um, yeah, so there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's, there's set things that we always do, even if nothing's gone wrong, just to keep the vehicles maintained properly. Um, but Sometimes there are things we have to troubleshoot as well. And then Steve, what's going to happen in the, in the wet lab after you guys get the samples? Say again. I don't yeah. know if that was for I, me. Or I heard it. was for it. Steve. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, we're going to probably take the, yep, quietly in the back. Uh, we're going to take the samples off the vehicle and then uh, probably process a lot of the biology samples first, image them, 
um, decide what kind of preservation we're going to use on them. Um, for the rocks, it's a bit simpler. We'll take the rocks, we'll image them, and then we'll go through a process of describing them and characterizing them in a bit more detail. Um, after that, we'll do some DNA, eDNA filtering. Um, if uh, Or if we have enough people, we'll do that while we're doing all these other things. And then we'll also hel be helping Coralie with her rock uh, crust project, if uh, if needed. To get to man the saw? Yeah. So for rock samples, uh, it probably depends on what you're looking for, but do you usually rinse them or do you collect like microbiomes? Like how does that? Not this cruise. Last cruise we did uh, microbe uh, collections on the rocks. So there was a very specific protocol for that, uh, that we weren't allowed to touch the rocks uh, that were for a specific purpose. But other than that, um, other than that, we just uh, proceed as normally. Uh, we don't have any specific protocols for crusts other than to wash them and dry them uh, and image them, and that's about it. And we'll ship them off uh, at the end of this cruise to the repositories for scientists to use. Yes, I had to haul some of those rocks when we, before we set sail. It's yes. exciting. Yeah, all 900 pounds of them from the last cruise. All at once, I'm a beast. They were what, like 25 pound boxes at a time. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's up? Like a little squid on Argus, Argus Camp. You good to steam forward? All right. Bridge nav. Are you happy with this setup for recovery? Um, are you happy with this setup for recovery? OK, great. Um, can we start steaming forward at 0 0.3 knots? Yep, 0 0.3. Thank you. Just hit under 300 meters, and we are almost there. Uh, bridge nav. <laughs> uh, are the tanks secure? Okay, um, we're probably about 15 or so minutes from the surface if you want to get the captain on the bridge soon. Cool, great, thank you.
all the little squid zooming by, getting in on the action. Almost there. Let's see if the pilot whale comes back. We're starting to wrap up this dive, just reminding everyone that our next dive is scheduled to be um, 4 a.m. Hawaiian Standard Time tomorrow. So they'll, uh, goodness, I can't even remember what day it is. Today's the 10th, right? So the 11th, yes, at 4 a.m. Hawaiian Standard Time. We do expect to be putting the ROVs back in the water. That will be a survey survey of Seamount G. <laughs> How can we troll Rennie today?
say that the uh, crew on the B back tech is getting ready for the ROVs to come back up. We're almost there. Oh, again, now that we're all back from the So, Megan, are there any organisms that like to congregate around the uh, uh, the back deck that we might see coming up? Well, we might not see anything uh, today, but if we were recovering later in the evening, we might see a bunch of squid at the surface. They'll probably ink us. So that's something to look forward to if you're going to join us at uh, 4 a.m. Hawaii time. That's when we are going to launch for our second dive of this expedition on Seamount G, another unnamed seamount in this hook-shaped chain of seamounts south of the Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument. We did see a couple of squids zoom by, but it wasn't a, a mass frenzy. Yeah, they get really excited uh, at night. But yeah, you'll still probably see a few zooming by. It's getting to be about that time of uh, sunset. And uh, the animals are going to start migrating to the surface. They get attracted by the lights of our A-frame, the lights of the ship. We could get lucky. Uh, some sharks often will swim by where, when we're at these shallower depths. They get curious about the ROV and uh, they come to check us out. But I don't know if anything's going to beat that pilot whale we saw first thing when we launched yesterday evening. Pilot whale in, sharks out, right? That's yeah. how it goes, right? Yeah. Got to have that charismatic megafauna to bring good luck to your dive.
got a couple comments concerned about our dear sea cucumbers. We'll find out soon how they did. Yeah, we'll find out soon how they're faring. Hopefully they're still intact after such a long dive. 